This is my 1956 Delta Rockwell contractor saw. A friend of mine did a full restoration on it a few years back, and I love it. It's beautiful, but even more than that, I like the fact that it features a small footprint, and despite that it is over 60 years old, it actually complements the functionality of my super modern MFT table pretty damned well. There's just one problem with it, really. It's shorter than any workbench that I have, and so I don't have an outfeed table to support it. With most saws, you would just build a platform to place the saw on and raise its elevation. But I don't want to lose the super cool and original retractable casters on my saw, so I have another idea. I'm going to remove the base, and then build some sort of a spacer to go between the base and the saw, and then put it all back together again. Afterwards, I should have an almost perfect table saw, for me, right now. Anyway, let's get started. The first thing I did was get some scrap steel tubing and clamp it to the surface of my MFT. Then I took a measurement from the top of my table saw to the bottom of the tubing. It ended up being right at around 15 sixteenths of an inch. From there I hunted around my shop for some materials of the appropriate thickness and found some scrap pieces of half inch Baltic birch plywood. When stacked I'm a little short of my goal, but it's a start. Next, I disassembled the table saw from the base and set it on top of one of my scrap pieces of ply. This allowed me to trace the base and get the measurements I'll need to create the spacer. Things like hole sizing, spacing, and the exact dimensions of the saw itself are fairly crucial at this point because the next step in the process is to lay it all out on V-carve. Now, I'm fairly new to V-carve, but this shape is simple enough that I was able to get it drawn out to scale in just a few minutes of computer time. If you've used a CNC at all, you know one of the biggest challenges is figuring out how to hold down your workpiece. Um, some guys build these fancy vacuum tables, other guys build these really crazy spoil boards with you know homemade clamps and all this stuff, and I just don't have the time or the inclination. But a friend of mine came up with this idea. Essentially, you lay down some blue painter's tape on your spoil board, and this is my workpiece with matching blue painter's tape. And all you do is super glue the tape together so that when you're done, you just take the tape off and you're good to go. And I've never done this before, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna see if it works. I decided it would be best to start with a test piece of MDF just to make sure I got my dimensions right and this new hold down system of mine was gonna work. So I put down some liberal beads of 2P10 on the spoil board, squirted the activator onto the MDF, and then pressed the two together. I've kind of turned into a 2P10 whore lately, by the way. That stuff just rules. And it seemed to work pretty well in this application, too. I used an 8th inch compression bit on the CNC, and it seemed to cut through the MDF really efficiently. And at no point did my workpiece wander or act like it was going to lift from the spoil board. I think I found my new hold down method for the CNC. Well, it fits. The hardware was a little difficult to get through the through holes. So I think I'm gonna go back to the laptop and make the through holes a little bit bigger to give me a little bit more play to mess with. But I like the fit around the edges. It's spot on, so uh, I guess I'm ready to make the real thing. But I wasn't. After getting all of my pieces cut and even laminating them together, sanding and finishing them, adding a four inch dust port, etc., I decided that I was being too lazy, and that if I had a CNC, I might as well use it to make something that would have some kind of real half-assed dust collection. So I went back to the drawing board, or in this case the computer, and designed a dust chute that was created by laminating a bunch of profiles cut by the CNC from 3 quarter inch birch. I like this idea of having a kind of sexy shape sitting under my gorgeous little table saw, and decided to start over. So I got to work processing some 3 quarter inch birch so that it would fit my little CNC table, and then got my setup done. I was having some issues with chatter on the CNC, but the pieces were coming out nonetheless. It was the dust from cutting all of these profiles that was killing me. So I eventually moved the whole shebang outside and continued cutting profile after profile out on my driveway. Once they were all cut, I could move on to the glue up, which took both a lot of time and a lot of clamps. It was important that I get each profile aligned well to one another, so I first glued up two pieces, and then I glued that assembly to another, and so on, until finally I had my finished part. My alignment turned out close enough that I could fix any perfections with a little sanding, so before I glued the sides to the dust chute, I decided to clean up the inside as best I could. 
Next on my to-do list was the dust port. I've never had much luck with hole saws larger than a couple of inches or so, so I was pretty nervous about boring this 4 inch hole in a part that I had so much time in. But to my surprise it went pretty well and my old Craftsman drill press made short work of the chore. And now I was ready to glue on the sides of the chute. This was pretty straightforward, and once done I had the sexy shape I was after. But I also had a bit of a hurdle to jump. <clears throat> this is either a really good idea or a really bad idea, but I had some alignment problems with my laminates, and as a result, I don't have a perfectly flat surface for my glue up. So what I'd like to do is run this thing through the table saw just to get a perfectly planar surface here. And what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna blue tape both surfaces glue these together so I have something to run against the fence of my table saw to get this thing perfectly flat. If I screw up, I probably screw up the whole piece. If it works, I'm good. So let's see what happens. I should probably mention here that I also use the fence of my table saw as a square guide to glue these temporary pieces onto the part as well. To get a square bottom edge on the chute, I had to make sure the tops of these temporary pieces were square to one another. It sounds confusing now that I'm sitting here talking about it, but it's actually pretty simple, and it worked. With the cuts done, all I had to do was remove the homemade guides, get rid of the tape, and then enjoy my freshly cut and square surface. So the shoot part was done, and now I needed to recreate the spacer to get my table saw at the appropriate height. This piece is similar to the part I created at the beginning of this project in that it is cut from two pieces of half inch ply, but there are a couple of differences. For one, the hole in the spacer needed to match the size of the chute's collector, and secondly, I wanted to French the chute into the spacer a bit to hide the joint. I did this by creating a pocketing path on my CNC. This was the first time I'd ever used a pocketing path, and it went okay, but I'm still having some issues with chatter. I'm not sure if maybe my cutting depths are too deep for my little CNC to handle, or if I've burnt up my bits trying to learn appropriate feed and speed rates. Whatever be the case, I was able to get the pocketing path done, but the chattering of the bit didn't create as smooth a surface as I would have liked. To combat this, I again used 2P10 to glue some sandpaper to the edge of a 3 quarter inch sanding block. This allowed me to get into the pocket and get an acceptable surface. That out of the way, I just needed to laminate my two pieces of half inch plywood for the spacer. And then, finally, attach the chute to the base. I couldn't come up with a good way to clamp this, so I decided to just use screws and glue. But I was pretty deliberate with my drill spacing and getting good clean countersinks on the holes. And with the piece all together now, I could add a finish. I used four coats of clear satin polycrylic on the piece, inside and out, sanding lightly with some 320 grit between each coat. I like this finish because it brings out some of the grain of the birch without making it too glossy or yellow. The final step was attaching my 4 inch dust port that I got from Rockler, and then after a few weeks of 20 minutes here and 30 minutes there, I could finally put my saw back together again. Well, it's done. And I'm sure the question most of you guys are asking is how well does it work? And the answer to that is I don't really know because I don't have a dust collection system. Which makes this project seemed pointless, but the main goal here was to get my table saw up to a level where it was even with my MFT, and I pulled that off. It works really well. Um, and the other thing was, is I wanted to learn my CNC machine a little better. I still have a long ways to go, but I'm much more comfortable with it, so I'm pretty happy about that. And it's gotten me to a place where I'm starting to shop a little bit for dust collection systems, which is something I really need to do anyways. One thing I did do <clears throat> was I hooked a 2.5 inch adapter up to the port and then I ran my shop vac off the saw and it worked marginally better than I expected. Because this is a contractor saw and I have the big opening back here, I'm never going to get the vacuum needed to get rid of the fine dust. That's just, it is what it is, right? But before I had a box under here that just caught all the big chips. And all this system is really doing is getting rid of that box and sort of automating the process of getting rid of the big chips. And for that, it actually worked pretty well with the uh, shop vac running it. So yeah, I'm pretty happy. And uh, thanks for sticking it out with me and I'll see you next time.